getting knocked, Sparta! <laughs> no heart needed! This is Ewan Rahman for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm in Manchester, I'm joined by the Cobra himself. Just seen Conor Ben destroy Chris Van Heerden. Give me your immediate reaction, please, Carl. I thought it was a very impressive, aggressive and um, high octane performance by Conor Ben. He just, um, I thought Van Heerden actually, he looks quite tidy in southpaw stance. Nice little jab looking for the counter left cross. But Ben was able to just walk through him and that'll be the, um, that'll be the inactivity as well of Van Heerden. He's not, he's not been doing much of late. I'm taking it away from Conor Ben. He was, he was ferocious in his performance and it was um, good quality. Hearns promised a big, big fight for Conor Ben next in the summer. What do you want to see? I'd like to see him, as I said, on, on air there on the zone, and, and, and people may agree, they may disagree with me, but when you're, when you're sidestepping um, domestic level, which is British and Commonwealth for me, yeah. so you know, you've, got, you've got Echo Asuman from Nottingham, British and Commonwealth champion, that's a great fight. It's a, it's a great fight that's going to give him rounds at least. I'm not going to say who wins that. Echo Asuman, and I'm very fond of him. He's, he's a friend of mine and he's, he's from my neck of the woods. I think, I think he could beat Conor Ben on his night. Um, but when you go straight past them sort of fights, which is British and Commonwealth level, and then you swerve European level, like David Avenesian, you're missing out on potential real, real good experience. You know what I mean? At, at that level, you learn so much. And um, with his lack of amateur experience I just think he needs them fights because you can't chuck him in there with a Keith Furman or an Errol Spence you just can't well, we saw Amir Khan get in the ring just there that's not going to happen surely is it mate I just said it on air and Tony Bellew cracked up laughing and I wasn't being horrible I was just being brutally honest Amir Khan's only good for one thing what's that getting knocked out how quickly does Ben stop him, in your opinion? It's not even a fight, it's a mismatch. Amir Khan needs to have a reality check and realise that his fight game's over. He was a great fighter, Amir Khan. He had some real good nights where I was proud of him for staying on his feet and, and doing the business. And he's fought at top level, he's brave as he come, he's got a massive heart and he, he tries when he's in there and he, he gives it his all. And he's, he's entertaining as well, it's always in an entertaining fight, even if it gets done. He always... He always performs and he comes to win. So I give him a lot of credit for that. But he, he now needs to realise that he shouldn't have took the Brook fight, really, but it was a little payday for him. But he can't carry on fighting when you're getting hit with a jab and your legs are gone. You can't. So he needs to just enjoy his family now and um, just relax and take up, I don't know, take up golf like me. You're just being honest. Though. I'm sure you see it on social media. Some people think you've got an agenda or something against them. It can't. Not at all, mate. He's a fantastic fighter. He's had a great career. Um, I'm not a massive, massive over-the-top fan of his, um, but I'm certainly not a hater at all. I don't. I think. I think he sometimes thinks I am because I'm so brutally honest. His, his missus piped up as well, and <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it just made me laugh. That was it. It's nothing personal, at all. What about Brook Ben? Brook Ben. It's a, it's a decent fight, isn't it? Because after that performance there, what Ben put in. You could say that, you know, he's... Because, I don't know, six months ago, Brooks passed his best. But after that performance against Khan, you'd say, oh, actually, he's still got it. He's still, he's still got what it takes. But Khan was so poor and so not even in the fight. It was quite flattering for Brook um, to look how he looked. But looking past Khan being so terrible, Brook did look quite good. He, he still had that, that timing and he was able to react to shots and counterpunch. And... Um, he wasn't smothering his work when he had Khan all over the shop. And I was quite impressed with the performance he put in, albeit against a shadow of his former self in Amir Khan. Um, so it's hard to say if Brook actually can mix it with world level anymore. But Conor Ben's not proven world level. So it's a, great, it's a great fight. I'd love to see it. Just to close off on the heavyweight division, of course, you're a man we all have to thank for where British and, and where well boxing is at the moment, including George Groves, what you did at Wembley. That record is going to be broken uh, 94,000 expected next Saturday night at Wembley Stadium for Fury White what are your thoughts on that I think it's brilliant it's, it's fantastic I'm actually sat on the fourth row with, with a, a sponsor um, CBD company Brains CBD yeah they're Canadian um, and I'm going to be sat with that team enjoying the fight loving it 
not crying because it's broke 80,000 at all. Great fight. I think Dylan White's got a chance. I'm picking Fury to win. Fury's tall, rangy, awkward, light on his feet. He's got more experience at that level. Um, his fights with Deontay Wilder really has, has, has took him to that next level in terms of self-belief. And um, I just think that it's going to be difficult for White to beat Fury, but he's in the fight, White is, and he's got a massive chance. He's, he's, he's a decent puncher and he would have trained his best for this. He's had some good preparation fights building up to it. But his fight with Chisora was, was a tough fight for him and he, his fight with Parker was tough. And when you look at them performances against them level of fighters, I just, you can't put them performances as a winning performance against Fury, but it's on the night and you don't know what's gone off before the fight and how the camp's been and the sparring and how his mindset's been. He's been waiting a long time for this. I think you're going to see the best of Dillian White and if, if you don't see the best of Tyson Fury as well, there could be an upset on the cards. If you was putting your last pound on it, what would you go? Fury stoppage, Fury points? I think I've already pretty much made my, my case clear and I think, I think Tyson Fury's going to just be a little bit too too slick and out of the way for him. That height and reach is a massive advantage in boxing. I'd, I've got quite long arms and it's, when you can land your jab, I mean, I got hit a lot with shots as well. So I didn't always use my reach, but early on, as, as an amateur in my early fights as a pro, I was able to really kind of dominate behind that reach. And Tyson Fury's got that height and reach on everyone he fights, pretty much everyone he fights. And he just makes it, he makes it count and makes it pay. And I just think he'll be too awkward and too slick and kind of out the way, out the way of Dylan White's heavy blows. but. If White backs him up and pins him on the ropes in the corners and stays in close and, and rolls inside and gets to him and starts landing hooks and that, who knows? It's heavyweight boxing and it's, it's a two-horse race. And, and when it's two horses running around, anybody can win. Something can happen, something can go wrong. Um, Fury is definitely, in my eyes, the favourite. And there's no, there's no agenda or biasness. I, Fury made his pro debut on my undercard for my world title fight. We both signed with the same promoter early on. Um, so we're mates and I've known him years. I've got massive respect for him. Any boxing fan should have massive respect for Fury and Dillian White. And Dillian White, to just talk about him for a second, we're on a good level. We talk um, every time we see each other, there's respect there. I think he's a fantastic fighter. What he's done in the sports, brilliant. I admire the guy. You know, I think he's, he's excellent. We had a good chat a few years ago, actually. And the way he's excelled and, and progressed, you know, in the last, last five or six fights, I think he's... He's a world beater. He's, a, he's at this level. He belongs at world level. And he can certainly cause an upset against Tyson Fury. But I'm just edging Fury as the favourite with no agenda at all for either of them. May the, may the best man win. May the man who's prepared the hardest and who wants it more on the night win. Um, I just think Tyson Fury, as I've said now for the third time, <laughs> has just got the edge. And I think he's a very difficult man to beat. Carl Froch, thank you very much for your time. And see you at Wembley Stadium next Saturday with your CBD sponsors. We you will be brain there. CBD, right? Brains yeah. CBD. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there. Look out for me. Top man, Carl. Thank you very much. You get knocked, Sparta. <laughs> get down! No heart needed. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Act. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.